To set up the WiseNet PTZ through the browser, enter the settings by clicking on the gear up top. In the settings, you will find the PTZ menu. In the PTZ menu, you have PTZ setup, PTZ limit, and RS-45 setup. Select PTZ setup to start, and the first selection is the presets. A preset is a location which includes a zoom. So you move the camera to a desired location, desired zoom, and then set preset. Preset 1 opens first and you enter a name for that preset. So here I will call it door. Select OK and you have your first preset. You can select up to 300 presets with a WiseNet PTZ. I can drive on screen or with the console to another location, select the zoom desired location, and select preset. Then my preset 2, I will call it table. Select OK and you have now have two presets. Let's make one more and drive it back over to the right a little bit in the window, back this up and set my preset. Again, I'll just call this window. Select OK and there you have your presets. Now, once you have your presets set, there's conditions that we can change in the presets. So each preset is a location and they're listed down below. Each preset has the ability to add a follow-up action. A follow-up action can be an auto run. So auto run is automatically run something. We'll learn that in a second. Auto tracking, which meaning at this location, once you get there to start a tracking procedure, of any motion or movement happening. You also can do an auto tracking and then go home, which means once you finish the time of the auto tracking, go back to a home position. There's also auto tracking and then when you're finished you can set it to go to auto run. An auto run is then something you're going to set up later and the auto run to automatically run. And then you can also have it choose an analytic. So if we were to choose auto tracking you get a tracking time so you have anywhere from 10 seconds to 10 minutes that you can dedicate to that tracking event careful not to overcommit too much time as the camera will be dedicated to that tracking event instead of maybe watching something else that you wanted to keep track of if I was to choose for instance an analytic an analytic can be set up uniquely in the camera for this one preset. So you have choices to go to the menu for both the camera setup, motion detection, and the intelligent video analytics. In this case, I want to show you the intelligent video analytics and we click the arrow to the right to take us to the menu. So here's my preset one. I'm going to enable intelligent video analytics and we can do things like a virtual line when somebody enters this area through the door I can pick up that line crossing event through here don't forget to apply to save your settings so there's one example you can select areas to as well I'll go back to the PTZ and pick up where we left off so presets besides the follow-up action, are used for these other menus as well. You can select a swing. A swing is the camera going back and forth between two presets, and you can have it pan or tilt, or both pan and tilt. A group is a group of presets. When you select a preset, you choose which preset you want to go to first and the speed in which to travel to the next preset. 
Also, the dwell time is how long to stop at that preset. So once I go to preset one, I will stay there for seven seconds. Next would be preset two at the speed of 64, which is 600 degrees per second, so it's really fast. I'm gonna stay there for three seconds. This is adjustable, as you can see, from one second to 128 seconds, so actually up to almost just a little over two minutes. My third preset would be the window, and I would stay there for three seconds, and then it would automatically start over again after that. So that is a group. A tour is a group of groups, if you will. We actually can have more than one group. You can actually have up to six groups. And in my groups, I can create a tour so that in the daytime, I could run a group, that which would be a set of what we call daytime presets. And then at night, I want those presets as well. And I'm gonna include some other presets in another group and call that a tour so then I will travel to more than the three presets in the daytime. I would have maybe five or six or whatever would be necessary for the location. A trace is the ability to create by driving the camera and record what I'm actually doing and that can be then set to repeat. So to travel as I just drove it including my zooming and that's all recorded in the camera and that can be set to rerun. We also have auto run. Auto run is what do you want to do automatically. Now the camera can be set and the default is set for off. So off would mean it is not gonna do any presets, it's not gonna do anything unless I set those commands in there. If I tell it I have options to select maybe go to a home position. There is a timer after any selection the timer is how long after anybody may be manually driving the camera and when to return back to home. So in this case, it's set for 20 seconds, but as you can see, it's adjustable from five seconds to five minutes. So at that point, after driving the camera, it'll return to a home position. Now a home position is like a preset, but it can be programmed on the fly through our VMS, through our NVR, and through the browser. And a home position is like a preset, but it's something that can be easily changed so that you can make uh, a different spot that you have a focus on, and that can be your home position. You obviously have the preset that can make a preset to auto run. You can auto run that swing, like we talked about, the going back and forth between the two presets. You can auto run a group, probably most commonly used. A group is those presets and the camera then will travel between the presets that I put in that group. You can auto run a tour, which again is a group of groups. You can auto run the trace and you can schedule. The schedule makes it very unique and there's a representation for each hour I can change. The default is to go to a home position but you can put in the calendar anything you want to do at certain times or days. Groups, tours, trace, auto pan, all of them a selection that you can put into a schedule. And then finally, last choice in there, you have auto pan. Auto pan is like uh, a swing, but it auto pans back and forth again based on a speed and a tilt angle. And those are the settings for the PTZ. Now back at the preset, I also want to show that not only can we have a follow-up action to a tracking event, we can set a camera setup unique to each preset. Each preset can also have camera setup. And if I choose camera setup in the go to menu, it will take me to the preset. And here my preset one I can adjust lighting conditions like my SSDR, white balance, exposure, day night, so I can fix the camera to be color or stay black and white or be auto. Our special settings where we can adjust some things like digital image stabilization and various things as well. Our focus setup, how you want to focus on this preset, and even the fan if you want to run the fan or set the fan during 
those preset options do as well. So that is the options for a PTZ preset and all of the uses for it. When using auto tracking for a preset follow up, select auto tracking and select the amount of time needed for your tracking event. The adjustments are from 10 seconds to 10 minutes. Choose your desired length and make sure you click apply on any changes that you make in the camera settings. For auto tracking, you need to also set up the auto tracking criteria. You'll find that under the analytics menu and auto tracking. In this menu, you'll want to select the camera height, if you want to zoom, if you do want to zoom, select the zoom level, small, medium, or large. Large being more zoomed in. You also can select a display indicator showing the tracking event. You can use and select exclude areas to not track through or begin your tracking in those areas. You also can select auto release which means at the time of that period that you select it will continue and release it and go back to any other task or duties you may have scheduled for that pan tilt zoom camera. As with all of our events you can select an email, record locally to the SD card or use an output during this tracking event. You also can schedule your tracking. The default is always, so it is always on, but as all of the events are available, you can select tracking days and time when you want to utilize the tracking feature. To use privacy masking on a PTZ, select from the main browser menu and on the bottom menu choices, select privacy area. Once you've selected the privacy area, enable it and OK that. You can now drive the pan tilt zoom to its desired location and select on the screen what you would like to block. So I'm going to start with four points and block out this black panel of the window. You then can select a name, you can call it anything that you would like to name it. Naming is not required. You can select a color and then you can select a zoom threshold, meaning when you zoom to a specific amount, then and only then does that privacy masking come on. For this first one, I'm going to leave it just on so it's on all the time. So there you have it. I'm then going to select a new one and start another privacy area. In this privacy area, again, I'm going to give this a name, left window, and then a color. I can leave it white, but this time I'm going to choose a zoom threshold. With a zoom threshold, I then can select how much I want to zoom in before the privacy masking turns on. So. I can either slide the bar over or click the plus and you can see in the background the camera zooming in and when I get to a certain amount I can say OK that that will be the selection. Make sure you click OK to save your selections. Now we'll go back and we'll demonstrate. So from the PTZ menu you can see I have the constant privacy masking over the window here. As I zoom in, the privacy masking I just set does not enable until we reach a specific zoom threshold and then my other privacy masking zone enables.